Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Crowned Life. And we're in part two of an anti-aging series. Part one, you might have missed it. Um, I did last week on diet. Today is going to be about exercise. If you missed the diet part, I'll have the video at the very end of this video so that you can click right to it as soon as we finish up on this segment. And so let's get into, you know, what this is about today. Um, I'm going to show you what I've learned about burning more fat in less time, even burning fat after you exercise, how to speed up your metabolism while working out less. Yeah, 10 minutes a day is all you need. No joke, no tricks. I'm going to talk about that in this segment. And also how to increase human growth hormone without needing long workouts, gym memberships, uh, expensive home equipment, sports bras, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to do this the quickest, cheapest, most efficient way. And um, so stay tuned if you wanna know more about that. Okay, so in a nutshell, what we're gonna talk about today is really targeted for people over 40, but if you're under 40, I will be talking about a little bit about that as well, just to contrast, you know, uh, help to understand why what used to work for us doesn't work anymore. And yeah, if you're under 40, you know, you might get some good information out of this as well. Of course, I've got to say before we get started, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a fitness expert, I'm just a lifelong learner, and I'm sharing with you what I've learned as, you know, a lifelong learner and, you know, what's worked for me, what's working out for me now. And I hope that benefits you. Um, in a nutshell, we are going to talk about uh, maybe cutting calories, doing cardio, not so much working when we get over 40. Um, what I'm going to talk about in this episode is what is more effective, which would be intermittent fasting, HIIT, H-I-I-T, HIIT, and strength training. I'll explain why those things don't work, but before we get into that, I want to recap the previous episode very quickly on diet to say, you know, um, I do believe that diet is really important. It's the most critical thing um, to me more so than exercise. However, I have seen some women over 40 look fantastic doing some of the exercise um, strategies that I'm going to share with you today and they look fantastic. Now, I don't think their health is in that great of condition because they're not doing what I recommend, which is, you know, um, anti-aging from the inside out, okay? But nevertheless, these exercise strategies that I'm going to share with you are highly, highly effective. Now, I also want to, you know, let you guys know before I get too deep into this, I have never been one to get into fad diets or count calories or restrict carbs. I've not been one of those people. I've just been um, very focused on increasing my nutrients. That's been my focus in life. I felt like, well, if you're putting good stuff in, you know, then you shouldn't be gaining too much weight. It's like I, uh, my midwife once said to me, it's very hard to get overweight if you are eating a bunch of fruits and vegetables, right? So I just focused on that. But as I got older, I started noticing things like, you know, the visceral fat in the midsection. And we're getting that because of all the hormone changes that we're going through um, at age 40. And um, not having that tush from our 20s that we used to have, just, you know, side note, I remember watching a lady who started really getting into um, a lot of plastic surgery, which I don't recommend, but, you know, people asked her in the interview what got this whole thing started. And she said, well, when I got into my 40s, I noticed then my rear end just started looking like it got hit by a big semi truck. And, you know, it was from there, you know, that's when she got started with all this plastic surgery. Well, I'm going to talk today about why that's happening, why we get the gut and we lose the butt and how to reverse that. Um, 
And it's not going to be what worked when we were younger, you know, doing the cardio, going walking, going jogging, getting on the elliptical, um, cutting back calories, cutting back carbs. That might have worked for us in our 20s, maybe 30s, but when you get into 40s, it takes a whole nother program. And if you're not aware of that program, you're going to be thinking like, what the heck is wrong? Why can't I get this back on track? So back to the diet issue, um, my first segment, you know, might have been overwhelming information. I do want to encourage you that, yeah, if you want to disregard that, there are people who just, you know, use the advice and the exercise advice that I'm going to share with you and they look great, you know, um, but if you want to be healthy on the inside and out, then, you know, please, you know, as overwhelming as it might be to change the way you eat, you know, start somewhere and then gradually improve over time because the people who, you know, just focus on calorie counting, but they're not eating nutrient dense foods, they might be skinny, but they aren't a healthy skinny. And yeah, they can have a lot of um, medical problems and um, they're able to look that way because of the intermittent fasting, by the way, that we're going to talk about shortly. And so, you know, my philosophy is go on and, and spare the expense. And I know some people in that last segment will probably be like, well, that's just too much money. I can't afford that. Well, if you take the personal philosophy that your health is wealth and you start looking at your groceries like it's health insurance and you start valuing your body as much as you do your bank account, um, then you know these arguments about it being too expensive or I don't like it, um, are no longer relevant because you're taking charge of your health. You're taking responsibility and you're doing what's right. And you're asking, you know, how can I afford this? And, and you're understanding that it's, you know, it's not a question of, you know, not paying. Okay. It's like I told one of my friends, oh, you're not, you're not getting out of paying for that. You're going to pay one way or another. You're, you're either going to pay in grocery bills or you're going to pay later on in poor quality of life in your final years with all the medical bills and medications and doctor's visits and whatnot. So I hope that encourages you. If you haven't seen the diet portion or maybe you did and you just didn't get this fire under your rear to make the changes, I hope you you know, what I'm saying here will give that fire, you know, that final oomph <laughs> for you to go on and do that. All right, let's get on to the exercise portion. All right, so what I'm going to talk about is doing just 10 minutes a day. You know, when I was younger, uh, getting on the elliptical 30 minutes, three times a week, you know, that would have done it, okay? Um, but when I tried to do that in my 40s, I was getting tone in my body, you know, um, but I could never seem to like lift that rear end and get totally rid of all that visceral fat on my gut. Could not figure out why. And so um, come to find out all of this frequent activity, which is cardio, whether it's like walking, jogging, swimming, getting on the elliptical, that raises your cortisol rates, your cortisol levels, which is what causes all that visceral fat. And so really over 40 crowd, especially, you know, if you're dealing with hormone imbalances, if you're dealing with um, your metabolism being out of whack, uh, uh, hypothyroidism, I was dealing with that, a lot of women are. Uh, you, you don't want to be bouncy, bouncy, bouncy 30 minutes straight. It's going to get your cortisol levels up and then you're going to wonder why can't, I'm doing all this work, why can't I get rid of the belly fat? You don't need to be doing that. What you need to do is bring down the activity level to just 10 minutes a day and then make sure that um, you're not focusing on this bouncy, bouncy stuff like cardio, but you're doing the um, HIT, high intensity interval training, okay? And that would be like sprinting, sit-ups, push-ups, squats, jumping jacks, uh, lunges, burpees, things like that. And um, also strength training. Um, 
And a lot of, and I'm gonna be honest with you, you know, when I got into my 40s and I was still in that 20, 30 something mindset of, oh, I'm just gonna go do cardio. <laughs> you know, I would go to the gym three, three times a week and I would get on the elliptical for about 20 minutes and then I'd go swim laps and, you know, and I'd go do some heat and hot and cold therapy and the, the sauna and the, um, cold shower and you know all of that and the um, jacuzzi you know spa and everything and it wasn't working I mean I my arms and my legs looked toned but I it just my core was ugh, you know and so I remember during that time someone told me well you need to do strength training and um, I had this gym membership wasn't cheap you know go in there at least three times a week and I don't know about you, especially for the ladies watching, I just didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable lifting weights. I don't know, I think a lot of us women, we have this mindset that, oh, that's for men. I don't wanna look like a man, you know? <laughs> and, um, and I don't, uh, by the way, you know, I do strength training, but I don't do it so much that I look right. Um, and by the way, I only, I only got started with this um, over the last month. I've been doing more strength training like um, every other day, three times a week. But again, only 10 minutes. So I'm not trying to bulk up like a man. I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder. But I think the other issue, uh, the stumbling block for me is that at the gym, I just, and I think a lot of women are like this, I did not want to be that woman over there with all those men. <laughs> I didn't want, you know, and that's just, you know, my thing, I wanted to be by myself, I didn't want to be bothered by all those men, bodybuilder type, you know, it was intimidating, I guess. And so we've got to get past that. We've got to get past the, um, the hang-ups maybe, the, the stereotypes that strength training is for men or for people who are trying to look like bodybuilders. And also realize that um, when I say strength training, I'm not talking about huge, big, heavy weights. I'm talking about something like, you know, light to moderate weighted dumbbells or kettle bells, okay? and you know maybe 5 10 15 pounds okay i'm not talking about lifting dead weight at hundreds of pounds i mean tens of hundreds right i mean if you want to do that to each his own by the way there's a lady here on youtube <laughs> who does that and she's older than me and she just wows me okay so i mean if you want to take it to the level you can but i think the main thing is that you do the basics that what i'm saying 10 minutes light to moderate weight every other day, three times a week. And what that is gonna do is miracles um, because for over 40, we're not really interested in frequency, we're interested in intensity. And again, it goes back to the HIT and the strength training. Um, with HIT, this is not about excessive jumping around and movement. Um, you know, where you need a sports bra and, you know, it's constantly, okay, move it around, tap it out. You know, like I've seen exercise videos like that where um, they're constantly, and, and, and again, for me, that just, at my age, I, I don't like that. So the channels that I watch and, you know, follow for my 10 minute a day workout routines are Fitness with PJ, Roberta's Gym, and fabulous 50s yeah i know i'm not over 50 but i really like her stuff and this kind of makes a point that you got to watch who you resonate with um for me again no offense but the the younger crowd i just it's a lot of bouncy bouncy and i don't i don't flow with that okay and i find that also um the the older women uh, they seem to understand exactly what our trouble spots are and they know exactly what to focus on. And I also find them inspirational. I'm just gonna say that. Yeah, I do like watching the older women because it makes me feel like, you know, if they can look great um, older than me, you know, then, then I feel inspired by that. So um, I'm just putting those suggestions out there of uh, channels that you could follow, but of course, there's a lot of other good ones. 
and um, pick what works for you. So I like to um, I like to look for 10 minute videos. Sometimes they get into 20 or 30 minutes, but um, what I will do is, um, you know, every other day do hit and, you know, look at, look on these ladies' channels or whoever you want to go to for H-I-I-T, hit uh, workouts, 10 minutes, and there's all kinds to choose from and you can focus on different areas of your body. Some are all over, you know, hit or all over strength training with dumbbells and or kettlebells. And um, if you're like me and you're like, well, I don't, you know, I'm not really too concerned. My trouble spots are not my arms and my legs. So I want to do double time on my stomach and my glutes. Well, then I'm going to do two out of three of the days, you know, on my strength training, focusing on that. And maybe the same with HIT. I do try to take two days off a week of no exercise at all. And then, you know, the five days a week alternating strength and hit every other day. By the way, as a little side note, um, I'm going to probably put in the link um, down below um, in my blog um, where you can get a just a basic starter um, set if you want, you know, kettlebells and a, um you know, different types of things for working out um, that don't cost a lot. Um, some of you who are really, really on a tight budget, um, I have found some dumbbells, you'd be surprised, over at thrift store Salvation Army. Um, I've got two actually that are like mismatched. Let me see if I can pull it up over here. They don't even match. They're not even the same color, <laughs> but they're both five pounds, okay? And I got them like at Salvation Army about 10 years ago. And, um, right, it's a starting place, five pounds, okay? So you just start somewhere, right? But got these at, at Salvation Army, and you'd be surprised how many people will donate exercise gear um, to thrift stores because they just they buy the stuff maybe the first of the year with new year's resolutions and then they never use it and it ends up at a garage sale or a thrift store or whatever so um there's there's a lot of um resale places where you can get these low budget and i've heard people say oh we'll just use some you know canned goods or something like that to work with and um there's all kinds of different ideas of even just how you can um work out in a way to build your own strength, to build your own resistance and, and balance. Yoga is something that helps with that as well. And I want to say also that if you are new to working out and you, you, you know, you're, you're not so sure about just diving right into the deep end, um, yeah, maybe don't. Maybe start off light. Start off doing yoga and stretching videos and this is really good for not only adjusting to you know getting your body adjusted to daily physical activity like that but also for setting a habit because for many of you that's really the big thing is just starting and setting the habit and being consistent so this is a good gentle way to start is just with yoga videos and stretching videos and that's going to help you with balance and mobility and strength and again another reason why you know if i went to those channels with those younger trainers i start realizing oh my god i can't i don't even have my balance like these people anymore i start feeling like an old lady you know and um so if you're having those issues where you need to get more core strength and and that balance back yoga is a good starting point and i say no excuses okay have a no excuse policy on this every day okay because um you can do you can do something right there's videos on here about chair yoga i mean one time i was talking to a girlfriend and I didn't want to hang up on her, but I'm like, God, I didn't do my thing today. <laughs> so I found a video while I'm listening to her for doing chair yoga. Yes, they have it. And another time I was fall, about to fall asleep in bed at night, and I'm like, I didn't do it today. I didn't do it. And they have um, in, in bed exercises. No, it's not what you think. <laughs> Get your head out of the gutter. <laughs> 
it was really like just stretching in your bed exercises okay but it was a way to check it off my list to clear my conscious like you know what i kept my schedule yeah maybe it was yoga in my chair or maybe it was stretches in my bed you know but i did something i did my 10 minutes a day and by doing that you're setting the habit and once the habit is set it's easier for you to start leveling up leveling up to where you might even like me at times get tempted to go beyond that 10 minutes and i'm not necessarily saying do it i mean if you feel led to do it do it all right um but just be careful like i said about the cortisol also i want to encourage you with um the hit and the strength training to focus on your glutes, okay? Um, one to three times a week, it will be good to do HIT. Um, and the reason why is because this is gonna burn a lot more fat than cardio and it preserves muscle. This is one of the reasons why uh, cardio just is not optimal if you're trying to get rid of this visceral fat because cardio has a tendency to burn muscle and fat and that's why i told you back when i was doing that in my early 40s i looked toned and slender in my arms and legs but i it wasn't burning the fat you know and a lot of times unfortunately it will also take off muscle and so we want to be careful that we're not burning muscle we're burning fat we're concentrating on burning that fat and that's why i said try to stay away from you know cardio i don't want to say don't ever do it but me personally my focus is hit not cardio because cardio is just not giving me the results i'm looking for and for those of you who don't know hit is basically um, high intensity or explosive movements for a very short duration with a slightly longer rest period so basically what you're doing is when you're doing the exercise you're giving 100 percent through intense physical activity and then you have a rest period um, and the average hit workout is going to be 15 minutes so this is really a great way for you to save time um, but also help you to burn calories effectively, more effectively than you might think. And it also helps to increase your metabolism. You don't need any, you know, equipment required. And, you know, all you need to do is, you know, when you exercise, give it your all till you reach your breaking point and then rest. So when you're going to see in these different hit videos that you look at online, if you try this out, you're going to see that you're going to go, 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 rest for 15 seconds. Go, 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 rest for 50 second, 15 seconds, okay? And contrast that to cardio where it's constant go, constant go, constant go, constant go. Again, I just find this is not only great for our age group to get these rest periods, you know, but given the research it's more effective so um, cardio on the other hand is going to be fueled by fats and it's just a slow steady pace and usually a cardio workout is about 30 to 40 minutes long and we don't want to burn the muscle along with the fat so unfortunately uh, Cardio is not only going to take more time than HIT, but it, it can cause muscle loss. And so um, probably it will be good for you to think more about body composition and realize, you know, what do you want to do here? Do you want to lose fat, not muscle, and do it in less time? If the answer is yes, you want to go with HIT, not cardio. I think I've made, made my case. I hope I have. <laughs> All right, on to the strength training. Um, this is something that I try to do, like I said, three to times, three times a week at least. Um, and I just do it every other day. I alternate. And yeah, there is some equipment required. Um, I use the dumbbells like I um, mentioned. And I've got, I've got some kettlebells. And I kind of alternate um, between I alternate between the five and the 10 pounds. Again, I'm not trying to go for anything massive or, you know, I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder, okay? What I'm trying to do is 
trick my system into burning more fat. That's really my only purpose. I'm not trying to be Wonder Woman, <laughs> you know? And so um, what I do this, what I do is every other day um, with a high carb diet, okay? The days that I'm doing strength training, I eat a lot, a lot of carbs. Again, not what we've been taught. We've been all hearing all this low carb and keto, which is lower carb than low carb diets, okay? Um, and along with having that high carb diet on those strength training days, I do intermittent fasting, but not like the young people, okay? I'll talk about that in a moment. But the thing is with this regimen, with the strength training, that's gonna build more muscle mass. It's going to tone the muscle. And at the same time, it increases metabolism. It burns calories round the clock. This is another reason why it's like, oh my gosh, you, you gotta do the strength training. Like maybe you don't want to, you're like, but I don't wanna, I don't, I don't wanna be like those guys down at the gym. Okay, look, understand, this is burning uh, calories and it is helping your metabolism even after you finished working out. It's a round the clock benefit when you do the strength training. So um, uh, that's kind of, you know, when I learned that it just was like, okay, fine, I give up. <laughs> that's the right thing, I give in, so I surrender. I'm gonna do the strength training, okay? So what to eat when you're strength training? Um, like I said, you need more carbs on those days because, um, Without the proper carbs, you're not gonna see the full effects of strength training. And um, just side note, you know, again, amidst this pop culture of keto and low carb and Atkins and no carb and all of that, right? I think we need to remember women do, you know, especially during the premenstrual stage of a menstrual cycle, we do tend to need to increase our carbs during that time. So um, some of you, if you want to do low, no carb or keto or something like that, I would strongly suggest that you're very strategic in that, okay? Um, consume carbs strategically, right? If you're doing the strength training, you know you need your carbs on that particular day. On now, on a non-strength training day, you can do less carbs. You know, if you're doing HIT that day, then um, you can do keto, which is basically what I've been doing. So some people, by the way, call this uh, carb cycling. This is something called carb cycling. So, and I'm gonna tell you like on the days after, you know, I finished working out from, you know, strength training, um, I try to, eat meat, you know, eat something high protein, okay? But again, I talked about diet in that first portion and I'll give you the link for that video um, at the very end if you're interested, okay? So another thing to consider, very important, intermittent fasting because that's what really also uh, increases human growth hormone that gives us that youthful appearance. And I have seen women over 40, 50 looking stellar and they don't eat well. And I'm like, how are you pulling this off? It's because they do intermittent fasting and they've doing, been doing it most of their life. Now, um, the way that the under 40 crowd does it versus the over 40 crowd, you know, what's effective for us is gonna be different for what's effective for them, okay? Under 40 cr crowd can get away with a 16, eight, um, schedule where basically they go 16 hours, no food, eight hours eating, okay? The over 40 crowd, however, there's been research showing that we are benefited most when we do a 24, 24 routine where we basically fast for 20 hours and only eat for four hours. So for example, um, if you are doing a 16-8 routine, which some of you might wanna start that way, you might like be, whoa, it's a lot of hours, okay? And you're not used to that. Uh, maybe you do wanna start at 16-8, although that's not optimal for 40-year-olds. Well, again, just start somewhere, do what you can, okay? And if you were to do like a 16-8 
um, routine, you might um, fast from 10 p.m. to 2 p.m. at night. That would be your 16 hours, and then you can eat from 2 p.m. to 6 or 7 p.m. And I want to say that when I started doing intermittent fasting, it was surprisingly easier than I thought it was going to be. But in all fairness, I think that's because I had already dealt with a lot of my addictions, okay, a food addictions. Like, if you are a sugar addict, a carb addict, and you try to fast and you haven't dealt with those addictions, I'm not going to lie to you, you know, that, that might be not as easy as my experience. And so, um, probably the first three to seven days of you trying to do this are going to be the hardest in terms of dealing with like low energy levels and um, dealing with cravings and whatnot. So just make sure that you're getting hydrated, make sure that you're only doing this maybe um, every other day, um, alternate day fasting as it's known. And especially for like women who are dealing with very strong hunger signals, which, right, I've dealt with that myself. Um, you, like I said, might wanna start with a 12 to 14 hour fast and then work your way up to that ideal 20 hour fast. Why? The benefits are going to be that you're going to have more rapid weight loss while you're maintaining muscle tone. And this increased nutrient intake, because when you put your body like in starve mode, basically, uh, in fasting, when you finally do eat and you put good nutrients in there, it really sucks it in. <laughs> so the absorption is really good. That's going to benefit your hair, your nails. And studies have shown that this intermittent fasting really helps you to tap into cell rejuvenation. So let's say you're going to fast, okay? What should you do before the fast? Probably you want to consume a high fiber diet, vegetables, fats, proteins. Um, I heard one fitness advisor say, and this was super simple, very easy, said bro uh, broccoli sauteed in coconut oil, you know, very simple, eat something like that. Um, if you do happen to have thyroid issues, you might want to supplement ahead of time, you know, right before the fast, supplement with um, D3, which, you know, you can get naturally from direct sunlight. Um, also iodine in sea salt, zinc, selenium, which you can get just from like two to three Brazil nuts you could eat. The thyroid issues are important to address because those can cause issues with processing carbs and creating a fatty liver. And by the way, that was something I noticed. Like I had thyroid issues and I was trying to address it and work on it. Um, but again, as much as I tried to just isolate that issue and deal with it, I was getting all this fat up here, you know, in my body, and that's where the liver is. So if you're noticing a lot of fat accumulating right under your bra line, right, right above your midsection, that's where that liver is, might be a sign of fatty liver that you've been dealing with that because your, your body's having processing difficulties, you know, difficulties processing the carbs. And so, um, be aware of stress levels as well. You know, there's studies that have shown that women deal with twice as much stress as men. And what this does is it just ch chaps out your adrenals and then it that affects your thyroid, which affects your metabolism. It's a domino effect, right? So make sure that you're supplementing properly if you've been dealing with any kind of thyroid issues to help and assist with getting the best results. Um, during the fast, uh, probably you only want to consume like black coffee. This is also said to um, speed up cell regeneration. I have, a, by the way, a blog post on why I quit coffee, how and why I quit coffee. So if you want to check it out, I have some other advice. Um, lately, I've been drinking um, a blend of mushroom coffee that's super healthy, okay, high in antioxidants, and then I put monk fruit in there, which is 
zero calories, zero glycemic index, and I don't put any creamers in there on a day that I'm fasting. And so this is going to help speed up cell regeneration, also known as autophagy. And this is something, autophagy is, you know, something we want when we're over 40 because that's going to um, help to get rid of cellular decay and degeneration and help get new cell growth and in there. And that gives us that younger appearance. And so um, teas like black and green and water. Let me show you what I've been drinking recently. Okay, this. <laughs> green tea. I love it. This is my favorite green tea. And um, I usually don't, you know, drink bottled waters and all that just to keep money down and all of this. But if you're going to drink like something quick to go, this is my favorite. I'll put the links below in my blog if you want to order some of this. All right. And I'm going to say if you're fasting, it's going to be a really good time for you to work out in the middle of the fast. It's going to help you get the greatest benefits. Um, if you work out in the middle of it, you know, you'll burn a lot. Um, but if you wait till the end of the fast, then it's probably going to be harder on you. Uh, performance wise, you know, you probably won't have the energy to go the distance. You might feel a little bit weaker, but it will burn the most fat if you wait to the end. And then when you break the fast, an hour before you break that fast, it's really good to drink some hot tea, which I do. I've been drinking this, um, blueberry slim um, hot tea and then I will put like some sea salt in there. Um, some of you might want to pick some other kind of tea um, with cinnamon added to it just to kind of lower the sugar levels and also to moderate uh, the cortisol levels as well. Um, if you don't have any of that on hand, um, what would be also good is like uh, four to six ounces of bone broth. Um, and I'll put, again, links down below for this. Um, bone broth, like I said in part one, it has collagen in it that is gonna restore your gut. Another option is just drink water with salt added, and the salt is gonna replenish minerals that were maybe lost. And um, once you do start eating, once you break the fast, it's very important not to mix carbs and fats. Okay, for example, mixing eating avocado toast, which a lot of us think is super healthy. <laughs> but it's car, it's, you know, it's carbs and fat. Don't do it. Not after um, a fast, because what's going to happen is, you know, your body is just going to suck all that fat in, right? Um, also, you don't want to consume any kind of alcohol, at least, you know, if you're going to eat any of this stuff, wait until you have eaten a proper meal and digested it, okay? Like you can mix carbs and proteins, which would be like meat and veggies, or you can mix uh, fats and proteins, which would be like something like bacon and eggs, uh, even though, you know, I don't recommend bacon, but, and I don't eat eggs either. I'm just giving it a for example, right? Um, it would be good for you to stick with any kind of lean meats like, you know, halibut, cod, sea bass, haddock, um, foods that are healthy, okay, the, um, I should say proteins that are, are healthy and contain healthy fats. Um, or you could have like a pea protein shake. And I have heard about Sun Warriors Warrior Blend being really good. I haven't tried it. I'm not really, to be honest with you, I don't do the protein shakes. I have experimented with several. I'm not a huge fan of them. To me, they're powdery, they're medicinal. It's just not my thing, okay? But if it's yours, you know, go for it. Maybe give that out, give that, that a try, that brand. Um, it's not whey, and I think that's the main cautionary here is to try to stay away from whey um, protein shakes because they can increase inflammation. We want to make sure that anything you're eating is not doing that. And the way to go is get a pea protein shake instead. Or you could do like lean chicken um, 
or some of you just might want to supplement with zinc during that time uh, you know and make sure any supplements you take are taken after the fast um, if you're taking supplements while you're fasting some argue you're actually breaking the fast so um, the best thing to do is um, make sure that when you're fasting you're not you know supplementing you're not in including any kind of foods such as creamers to your coffee that might break the fast okay and um, work out while you're fasting and then you'll have more strength and you'll have more nutrient absorption when you do finally break that fast. Some of you are curious about, well, how much should I eat? And um, I mentioned in the very ending of part one to go to that macro calculator. Um, and I put the link for that in my blog post on you know the, that first segment, but I will put it again. Um, it's really important that we know you know, how many um, fats and proteins and carbs we should be taking in. For each person, that's going to be different, especially, you know, depending on what your goals are with weight loss. Some of you, you know, that's going to change day to day, especially if you're doing the carb cycling. You're going to want to go to that macro calculator and make sure that you're calculating, you know, I need high, car uh, high carb intake for today. And based on my age, gender, and weight, and my activity level, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell me exactly, you know, how much um, you should be taking in versus on a low carb keto day when you're not strength training how much should you be taking in? So that would give you some idea of how much to be eating, how often and when. And like I said, if you've got more questions on the specifics of what to eat, look at part one. And I'm going to leave it off on that note. Next week, we're going to cover skincare and makeup. In the meantime, if you want to go check out that video on diet secrets to reverse and slow aging, it's right here. Click on this video. It'll take you right over. And until next time, wishing you guys all the best. Be blessed.